request that we get that signed and scanned to John ASAP. John Simple, the contractor. Is this here? That's the one I just gave you. Okay, I guess we've already made a motion. Do you want another motion? Need to fill out the front page too, Chairman. We're going to recess until one o'clock. Uh, excuse me, Franklin, if you would please look at your agenda again. We just talked about the last item on the agenda still needs to be addressed. <laughs> okay, I guess we'll get that. I got, I got two it. questions, too. Yeah, go ahead. I got one on mosquitoes and one on something else. Uh, how come the regular truck hasn't been around? The county truck. Well, <laughs> that's another big thing. Our coordinator had all winter to get that thing ready to go and stuff. And at the last minute, oh, there's this problem, there's that problem. It's, it's one hell of a mess, I'll tell you that. Billy, if I may share with you some truth on and answer your question. The uh, sprayer has already been out more times than was done last year altogether. He has been out. He goes out every single night. Now, if it's too windy, he can't spray. Um, it is uh, Riley is our sprayer. You can ask Scott if you want a full listing of the days, the streets, everything. He has a full plan, and again, he has already been out spraying this year. More hours than was done all last year put together. Did last year you didn't do any? We did, through the contractor, because it was all through the contractor, 7.6 hours of spraying total. So, yeah, it was abysmal last year. Um, the fact that we've had a wetter spring and more mosquitoes this year um, it's worse it's far worse and people are feeling it and it's not okay that this commission has drug its feet on this issue um, but yeah Riley has been out uh, the truck did break it got fixed so please check with Scott and get a full listing of where he's been when and for how long yeah. thanks I just got a report from him on Monday just verbal though or else I'd share with you the documentation I don't have it all right. Did you have another one? I got, yeah, it's totally on a different basis. Go ahead. And, uh, where Delzer and Kent Lane come together. Before, there used to be yield, yield signs there. And, and then this has been two, three years. They all of a sudden, a stop sign showed up. And the one yield sign was taken down. And... I would like to see it changed because everybody runs it anyways. I mean, probably 80% of the people stop, another 10% roughly stop and go, kind of. And there's very few people that even stop there. Coming from Delzer to town. You'd rather see the yield I'd sign go back. Signs. And I don't know if you guys had some, I don't know if any accidents or anything that happened there before. Put, Couple of yield signs up and two stop signs on the other direction. They're coming off a dirt road most of the time. There were kids going down there and hauling butt back this way, anyways. They should be down there, anyways. They're just down there spinning wheelies. And, you know, you got people down there using them for walking their dogs and little access to you know, lakes and stuff. But 
Yeah, so, well, you only have one person lives down there. So. so what would you rather see? You'd rather see a yield sign coming off of Delger and a stop sign coming back from the... A yield sign off Delger, a yield sign off Canton, and maybe a stop sign off coming down off the refuge. There's oh. already one at the bar plant, stop sign. That's a... I don't know if you guys have any suggestions. Maybe. You probably see it more than anyway. Well, okay, that'd be pretty simple. I'm just wondering which what you would do with people coming down. So you're going to have the people on Canton yield to the people on Delger. Yeah. You know they're going on the dirt road anyways, unless they're turning. So. Yeah. That's the way it was before. You know, it seemed like they had no problems. What I would suggest, both for you, Billy, and for this commission, is that we talk to Dana. He's our road supervisor. Uh, he may have a reason. He may not have thought about it. I don't know. But we shouldn't be making any decisions for his department without even engaging him. Yeah, that, that, that's yeah. pretty much what I see, is everybody that's coming off of the bottom of, from the refuge is going about 90 miles an hour by the time they hit the pavement. Yeah. And there's a whole lot of people walking dogs down there. It's like they're all on a schedule. <laughs> it made it a lot safer for them because they feel the park right there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, no. How are you doing? That's one of the things I had. And then the yield on each the other way sounds. Like you have to have a yield, a yield to going north on Kent and a yield on Delger going west. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mike, did you have something? Oh, I had sent the email to the commissioners yesterday, I believe, or was it Monday, concerning the cell booster. Yeah, it's that's been, been taken care of. It's all been taken care of. Well, you guys do great work. <laughs> and then uh, I forgot to send you an email about, uh, I think I brought it up during the budget here, I need any extra general fund money and DES I like to have stuck in. Uh, CIP for DEM. That's up to your discretion. That's all I got. Thanks, Mike. Very good. Thank you. Thanks. I'd like to request that perhaps you could go ask Mike Myers if he's ready to talk to us about the phone contract, if he gave you a copy. Um, either way, Chairman. See if he's available. I would say whatever yeah. the Chairman says. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, but that is not professional, whatever. I apologize for calling you stupid, Franklin. Um, I do think you're inept, especially as a chairman, but um, that was unprofessional of me to call you stupid, and I apologize well, for that. Well, on my part, I, I cussed a little bit there. I take that back, but... Oh, we do have a contract. Good. Um, My only do we concern even... on that is that if we should should switch to Blackfoot, would Blackfoot would these people's services still be required? Yes, absolutely. Because what we have from Blackfoot at this point is VoIP. We can't do VoIP with 911. 
We've got to have landlines. Well, I mean, if, if we left 911 with CenturyLink, these people would still be required to handle. Would they still maintain all of the phones in the courthouse, or would Blackfoot re be responsible if we changed our phones to Blackfoot? Would Blackfoot be responsible for the courthouse, and these people be responsible for 911? Or if Blackfoot covered 911, would Blackfoot basically what? take over this portion of the con of the of that con? Would that part of their contract be that contract? No. Can you still have to have connect here regardless of who we have coming in? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we can add Blackfoot to the mix. Certainly, add another company. That's not a problem, but we still have to have Connect, and we have to have nine one one on a landline. We cannot do it as a void. So what Mike told me was that the last time that nine one one went down, which was like two weeks ago on Sunday, was the Century Link and came and fixed that before these guys even knew they were down. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, do these people handle situations other than 911 is what they do, but do they also handle 911? I mean, why did CenturyLink come down to fix that? Was that CenturyLink's problem, or was it our system's problem? I don't know what caused it. I also heard that CenturyLink came down and fixed it before even anyone even knew it was Yeah, before down. anybody knew, because they right. hadn't got any calls, I would assume. Right. As far as... Which piece of the puzzle each one of these entities has, I'm not an expert on that, so I can't answer that question. I can tell you that Connect has done a very good job with us. They work very closely with DIS, and they are our 911 lifeline. Um, without them, we don't have 911. I mean, we have to have a landline for 911. So um, I don't see that we have a choice but to sign the contract okay. again. Okay. Um, but we can certainly, if we uh, get something back from Blackfoot, we can certainly add them to the mix. Okay. Um, but what they presented us to us so far for phones does not work for Broadwater County because we have to have something other than void. Okay. So, is Mike coming or? Um, uh, Eric was trying to find him. Okay. Okay. I don't know that we need him. Um, I I know we need the phone so. If you guys want to wait for him, that's mm -hmm. fine. If you want to just vote on it, it's fine with me too. What do you guys think, Mike? I think after the conversation I had with Mike, that if these people are, are, are required to be in here no matter what, then we must well go ahead and go with the contract because we're not going to cancel. And the thing is, you, you, it's only a three-year contract. So then it says, it says here that it's renewable on a yearly basis after the initial period. So do we renew it every year? After this three years, do we renew again for three years again? Or we could do it at a year at that point. So do we have a contract with them before? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it um, seems to me that we could actually, if the other contract had the same clause, we could make this a one-year renewal. If it didn't have that clause, then we can do the three-year and then one year after that. And I would imagine... It, 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 if you change this to a one-year, do they change their rates? Oh, it, both sides, mm -hmm. yeah. The thing with with any contract is you do run the risk of higher rates if you if you renegotiate every year. I will say we have had excellent service from Connect. We have been. We have, yeah. Yes. Big promotion. Sign that for a three-year contract. A second. Connect. Move to second. Sign the contract with Connect on a three-year contract. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed. It looks like it just wants one signature.
Thanks, Arm. Okay, and I guess we are at 10.50 or recess until 1 o'clock. <laughs>